checking some stuff here. <laughs> Alrighty, waiting for people to show up to suggest stuff before we get started. Alrighty, just waiting for a few people to show up before we get started. Um, the way this is going to work is I have an AI conversation script. I'll prompt to describe a couple characters in the scene, and I'll just take whatever the chat suggests, drop those in, and um, we'll see what the AIs do. Hey, Matthias. Matthias, you want to be the first to suggest something? We're going to describe our first character, a character named Jesse. Hello. I'm just, I'm just going to let the chat describe these, these people. So. Uh, Imagine something like a retired firefighter, a world-renowned astronaut who just ate a pizza, you know, whatever you want. I could kick it off if that would make it easier. Let's do, um, and again, I, I'd love to hear your suggestions. Uh, a grocery store manager and a, okay, uh, a fortune teller who keeps getting into traffic accidents and where are they at we need a, a scene or a location you know something to set them up
uh, <clears throat> waiting in line at the DMV. All right, ready? Here we go. Sees Alex approaching. Alex, what's up? Stairs. Um, this happened before? Heck yeah. You're pretty much the only person I ever see come to this DMV. Heck, it's tough and mostly boring <laughs> work, but you asked for it, now suffer. Oh, okay. Alex, look at this form. Do you really think green is a color? <laughs> um. Look, takes driver's license from Alex's hands, blue, red, green. Number four color out of a possible six. Could I have the imagination to think up something so creative? Don't be another Bobby Thursday. I'm um, okay. Later outside the DMV. Um, that DMV was close. Really? MMHMM. I told my hippie friend what a full moon means. You know the story arc? Um, oh yes, of course. Are you okay? Um. Oh, Alex doesn't have what's much to wrong? Say. Yawn. Exits Mohawk slowly. <laughs> Exits the Mohawk rapidly, um. Almost hits Alex with Mack truck. <laughs> Almost hit by Mack truck. <laughs> hey Alex, did you see what I was listening to today? Um. Look, I don't want to hurt your feelings. I think you can be sweet and kind, but... Alex, do these dinosaurs work? What is a lemur anyway? Rambles on. I don't know Lassie, or Yoda. I guess we could share pizza, it's not Greek, but then what culture doesn't have their own version of a good old pie? Stand-up comedy scene. Herkel. Winks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yawn. That narrator had enough of Alex saying, um, I guess, uh, what character did I give him? I can't remember what I, I told him to be, but it wasn't creative enough. All right. Fire it up again. What's Jesse this time? And it can be as, like, specific as possible, like, uh, First year student at Hogwarts Castle, and, um, you know, uh, experienced scuba diver. Let's see. Santa's elf. Uh, wizard on vacation. All right, I'll, I'll just start putting some in. An ex con stand up comedian. Comedian. Thank you, impatient stargazer. Um, I'll do an experienced storm chaser. And the scene, let's do... Um, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll put that in the next one. Anybody have a good scene in mind? We can do, let's see, investigating a mummy's tomb. That's not bad. try that suggestion let's hit it 
traveling through the Red Sea. Alex, would you like to hear a joke? Your joke is ridiculous. We're on the desert where we saw two of. I tell a better joke than that looking glass you're using to watch. The joke about the man who tripped and hit his head on 180 plus myelin. Sand dune and heard voices which he ignored? Yes that's it, now this man is a secret agent. Listen, sitting up on a sand dune overlooking the Nile. Oh, Able yeah. to read lips at a 1000 paces. He is asked by his superior. I probably heard Stormtrooper. Points at the Nile. Who is sitting on the Tigris? About some local knowledge. The joke is so old. Oh, okay, I tell another joke? You didn't tell the first one. The answer is comical. Listen, two aliens fell in love so they could return to H. You shouldn't tell jokes from Baghdad, Iraq. How do you know I'm telling set in Baghdad? Makes hand motion as if talking. <laughs> oh, okay. I tell you another joke? <laughs> Your jokes are crazy. Oh, okay. I tell you another joke? All right. This one's kind of gone this over This joke rails. is funny. Light years away from their home planet. The conversation ended after these. 200 million years with an old joke still unfinished? What is funny about that? Laughs. Ignoring her, if you think I should ignore this joke just because it ends wit. Mocks Alex. <laughs> they killed themselves in front of me. What? Laughs because of previous joke. <laughs> All right. Um, that was strange. Uh, we'll do... Testing, 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 testing. My back. Hello. Okay. Weird. Like the USB uh, mic amp just stopped. Uh. All right. We need the the scene. Did anyone suggest a scene? I don't see any scenes in the chat history. This is my first time in Paris. Cool, me too. Once intended as a portrayal of the Trinity, it is now an internationally significant structure meant mainly to impress women that should have left your clumsy friend behind if wants to see pretty towers in liberal cities. Wow, okay. What do you mean? There's Paris, and enlightenment. All right, E not lecturing. I want to have a nice time on this romantic occasion. <laughs> Gasp, you're blushing. Yes. Is the tram station I have gray hair? What was that? What just happened? 
our binary solar system, modeled after the sun of my glory master race laughs. Please stop it here. We're not talking about binary stars? We have to shut up childish fights with your father you're normal, and I am too. Wagther's law puts the idea on trial. Did my hot dogs get sufficiently smarter since leaving home? Is there a correlation between heads and tails? False correlation leads to the prison of jails, which is fitting for your delusive iron fist. Heated conflict conflict resolved while hugging and kissing. I'd like to try something different today. Sure. Why not? I think it'll be fun. SRBIJA. Do you know how to do it correctly? <laughs> My brother showed it to me. He's an idiot, not really, knowing glance. Are you my dad? Why does the neighborhood burn? <laughs> Good prank, why did he say that? I show you every genre, not a bird is singing. This is starting to look interesting. Is that what you want me to say? I want you to say with all the respect I have when introducing any two pop albums. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what happened there. It must have been that God Complex character was... Was this too much? Alrighty. Let's see, let's check the chat for suggestions. Um, a retired NASA astronaut. Um, did I miss one? I think I might have missed one. A six year old. <laughs> six-year-old and where are they at <laughs> picking lettuce carrots and tablespoons of mayonnaise we need milk and homemade meatloaf I want to cook I am going to make the homemade meatloaf. Then I will buy the milk. You know, there are things besides milk and meat that you can eat. Milk and meat is good for me because I am strong. <laughs> I eat salad too. Is that strong? Mayonnaise is strong. It makes you healthy. <laughs> Car trip home. Mom, I am tired. Can we sit in the back seat and snuggle? Alex, not front seat. We can lay down and you can drive slower. Then we won't get tired. <laughs> it looks like there is tumbleweeds back here. It is special camping gear for traveling in the back seat. <laughs> I don't think your grandfather wants to camp in the back seat. <laughs> okay, I will take out the camping gear for another time. But remember we can do it, Mom. Your last words? Thanksgiving. You aren't old enough for a real turkey. <laughs> turkey is food for the soul. I am big now, with a strong health mayonnaise body and I want to eat turkeys that fly through the air like airplanes. Dot yes mommy? Alex, what is that in your head? It is my special race car helmet. It makes me fast. And smart and handsome? My F1 helmet makes me faster. AF1 helmet is funny looking. I wish you would get an Indy 500 helmet like me. Those are pretty cool. Okay, but what about my race car looks? A few weeks before Christmas. Mom, let's do advent calendar together. I found these cheap kits at Hobby Lobby. Okay, but we are only doing three. One for you and one for mommy. <laughs> Mayonnaise <laughs> makes you stronger. <laughs> that was that was great. 
Oh, uh, wow. Okay. Whew. And scene. Um, all right. The next Jesse is... Let's hear those ideas. <clears throat> An international spy. Love it, love it. A retired sitcom writer. <laughs> Who walks dogs <laughs> and TikToks. All right, in the scene, making a TikTok. We'll do Rio next. A little crocket and tubs. A little Colonel Mustard with the candlestick. A little Lady Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. A little Jessica Fletcher with a shotgun. And a little Mrs. Harriet Tubman guiding the Underground Railroad, ding. A little Cheech and Chong. A little Dagwood or maybe Blondie, What's ding. What's happening? A little Winnie the Pooh with silly putty. A little Kong and Kodos. Or apple pie with a file in it. And a little Captain Kirk, ding. Or eating a bug off Hammond's shoe, ding. But mostly we made shorties, one oh after no. the other. Repeating the same formula. With a signature gong at the end, ding. Is that like a TikTok thing? We used to think of ourselves as brave explorers. To infomercials and soap operas. And game shows we've chartered new territory. And probably spent too much money on dinner and wine, ding. <laughs> we've done what we had to in order to survive. Including making a deal with the devil. Oh boy. And we've seen naked people, lots of them. <laughs> like people who would never even meet each other. <laughs> Sticking together through thick and thin. <laughs> and one day they bring you on a case. To help the CIA, ding. <laughs> but you can't work for them because of legal reasons. Because of legal reasons. <laughs> and then it stops making sense, ding. <laughs> it's part of the role. It's just a part of the job description. <laughs> I don't know what that was. What is that little? Is that a, like a TikTok thing I'm not aware of? Huh. Alrighty. Let me check. Um, I'm surprised they repeated little that much with the settings I have. Who knows? All right, what's up next? Oh, we already, I got some in the history. Um, a retired dog walker. Dog walker. A world of Warcraft. Player. Oh, tech Twitch streamer. I missed that one. I'll put that next. All right, hit me with the scene.
Um, tennis court came in through first, so we'll do um, playing tennis at a tennis court. Although Jesse isn't as good at sports. I wonder why I'm moving slowly to the ball, as if faced with a difficult decision. First one on 10 wins. To herself, why can't the ball just hit me in the face and get it over with soon? <laughs> we should actually seize the second to say what lies on the hearts of every negative person online. Noting. I fairly immediately got weary of the enemy and went to play with my cats, Mikey and Sakura. I was confused where you were but enjoyed doing something in third person mode. My fatness aided me and I quickly got my plus 2-0 experience points. I liked the cinematics when someone died. As Jessie continued on her journey of self-betterment by competing in tennis. Someone was gonna play the Wicked Witch this year at school. I laughed every brick that you dropped on someone's foot. But then something unexpected happened. Something impossibly good. Something is Pokemon can actually be considered worse than, say, Fallout 4. Cries. <laughs> Ooh, a bottle of violet ink. To herself, you. As they invite their friends to enjoy some Pocky in the gym. Some what? Pocky. Okay. Yuha. My my. Pocky will be your new post-game dialogue. The charm at the bottom. <laughs> I think it held a bunch of delicious shrimp maki. I really love it cause it makes me taste like Mountain Dew. <laughs> I now understand why Magic Leap is Apple's new pet project, because dungeons are just ugly and unrelatable. Oh yeah, okay. At the supermarket. You did not share my excitement about watching a cartoon. <laughs> Buy this Betty Boop Jello mold that we have at home and I will pick a fight with you. Oh, <laughs> uh, wow. Okay. <laughs> wow, that was pretty good. Alrighty. Um, a Naruto cosplayer. They did forget the mayonnaise. <laughs> And a tech Twitch streamer. Yeah, just go ahead and drop ideas uh, while it's going, and then I can just paste them in once, once it's time. And um, eating at McDonald's. Alex notices a blonde walking into the elevator. Is that the girl from the bookstore? So what if it is? So you've had your eye on her for a while. Yeah, so? Don't tell me you want to ask her out. Fine, I will. You do that, I'm calling her. I'm scared. Alex's phone begins to ring. Hello, who's this? This is Don. Who's this? Don, James's big sister. It's the internet. Okay, what's going on? Well, he told me about the playboy and how you let him down. I'm calling to warn you not to mess with that girl. Why's that? Give me your address. Five minutes later, Alex hears a knock at the door. Uh-oh. Alex, I'm here for your punishment. Punishment for what? What did I do to you? If I have to spell it out for you. Well, look, lady, I'm bad at math. <laughs> First, you have to apologize. Apologize for what? I tried to ask her out. Calling me lady and speaking in third person? Well, you don't look your age. Dawn turns red. Well, guess what? I can't be blamed for that. I've seen some of your bookshelf and you might want to get Disney. How about I slap you with this spatula? <laughs> <laughs> wow. What a finish. Strong finish. I love that. <laughs> if I have to spell it out for you. Well, look, lady, I'm bad at math. <laughs> Too good. 
All right, anyone put in any suggestions? Let's go. Um, not see, uh, yeah. All right, we need some new ones. Uh, I think I'll avoid pole dancer. This gets, I've had to put a lot of like filtration in here to avoid how toxic it gets. So it, it goes downhill real quick if you don't get it under control. It is the internet model. Poker player and a phone operator. All right, where are they at? A wine tasting class. Here we go. It's a Friday night. The wine is dry and dusty. You've got to make an effort, dude. Just because I don't wash my hair every day doesn't mean he's not. You are really good looking, but your date tonight isn't paying attention. You mean Joey with the doneness of a tuna? What? I told you to stay away from that MIT beater button, non-committal twerp. I don't want a cure. I'm happy to sit at my cubicle farm, pushing papers from 9 a.m. till 5 p.m. Oh. You've never been in a cubicle. But really, there are bills that need paying, food that needs eating. I am perfectly capable of eating or not, as I choose. And besides, picking up the check at Morton's for one changes nothing about what happens a week later. Morton's for one is packed with overpriced filet mignon and exotic shrimp cocktails that nobody eats, sinking. I don't why, I'm a libertarian. It makes perfect sense to abuse someone else's resources right at the edge of being unprofitable, because they'll probably be able to for only short while before they bankrupt. Dumping carbon into the atmosphere won't make government go away. It is all done with incentive systems and markets. I remember in economics class sophomore year, when we all had to spitball new revenue sources for various governments. Okay. I remember that class too. For some reason, you were the only student who always lost it and had to be restrained and led from the room. Incentives. Don't look at the rest of consequences, just the rewards, even though everything is made far more complicated by economy and history. You do realize that for someone who claims your life is get rich, but unattached good looks and other than that you don't like it. Didn't you get the Hyperloop plans I faxed over this morning? <laughs> It's just hard to remember what two men doing lines of cocaine in a Soviet-era apartment. Pure, unfiltered cocaine. Because in this alternate universe there were boundaries. Actually, answering your door would be considered an unheard of luxury to anyone. Sure, I'm seeing a bunch of people tonight. So party on. If you're a libertarian, you have the right to meander without guilt. I'll see you if and when I feel like going to that. And of course you ignore the rights and well-being of others. I'd like to talk you out of that. I insist, in fact. The amazing thing is, you really think they'll listen. I'm looking forward to next weekend, too. I'll buy the drinks of whoever wants. Certainly some people in DC who are rewarded richly for riling up the ignorant and fearful middle. Either they're going to drop the shitcoin, or sign over their privacy rights in exchange for a few crumbs. What a strange and far-fetched parallel with pre-war Germany, complete with book burning. Oh, wow, okay. What did we say they were? A poker player and a phone operator? I wonder how that got so different. Um.
All right, what's Jesse this time? A jazz musician at a rock concert. Love it. <clears throat> Did I miss any from before? Slide park manager. Oh, heavy metal singer, thank you. Alright, and the scene shall be the water park. I need to make sure I like, I think I need to type these in like with at and a in the right places or else the prompt can get messed up. The pool Jesse is relaxing in. I love days like this. Days where the water is clean and calm. Most of everyone has gone home for the day so it's quite nice here in the pool. The pool is cool, but I've seen the brackish tide pools nearer the ocean and those are great. You've been to tide pools, Alex? You never told me this. Why haven't you ever taken me there? Thanks. I've never taken you there because it's 60 miles, out of the way. It takes a full day to get there and back so it's not feasible in one day. Besides both our other bands play here on Tuesdays and Thursdays can't we just stay at home a little more instead of making that drive all the time? But I love you, Alex. Spending time with you is the best and that's why I travel so far to see all of your shows, even if it means walking for three hours back in the middle of winter. <laughs> so sure make little changes to our relationship as fiscally things won't work out for us, at least not at first. Laughs. Hey, uh, dot why don't we go there together? I'm proud of my car, points to it. Oh, do you really? Phew. Okay, thanks. Well, that's good. I love your car too. Really? The setting changes to a parking lot. Alex and Jesse climb into the car while park rangers escort them away. Jesse, in the passenger seat was copying Alex by checking how cool his car is too, with her hands upon its hood. To rangers, hello rangers, how are you? Nice car, my instrument is in there, gestures, kinda like, hey y'all check out my prize possession here. Chuckles, yes, it is cool. Hugs Alex, as if to say everything will be okie dokie. Aforementioned chuckle. <laughs> right, you know you two are all well aware why I'm here. This week it will be cool if Alex and the car got to skip over these procedures, or at least suffer very little of them. Natural. Q, no. Alex and Jesse finally get into the car. Seems as though nobody wants me around because now it appears I'm cursed or something the cops were chasing Alex. But they caught me, do you have that Shotzi? What? Yes, here it is. Shotzi is German for sweetie. What are you? I've already said before that I try not to lag behind. Now, you are Velcroed, words up against each other repeat. To me so be very careful and don't get us both hurt when we travel folks. That's it. I like to think of myself as more, suture. Ah oh, yes, like the medicine. Ah uh, actually it's okay I've heard of people with stitches being kinda cool except in modern days they don't expire for so long and instead get a little more biodegradable or something. Are you okay babe? Uh oh we're dying. That was fast. And now, cue angelic symbol. Eyes roll back into his head. Yeah, I think it's almost time for me to doze off a bit. What's going on? Alex and Jesse die to a curvy rural road. 
As body burns, well, thank you for everything, Tess. <laughs> yeah, Tess? it's Alex. You and I have had many icy moments in our relationship right from the start and I'm proud to say that even when we finally were set to get really serious on the way between my band practice, I see the rangers look at us, all the way back home. But why are they breaking down their blockade? I guess they're speaking from the grave, I don't know. <laughs> I like to think of myself as more suture. All right. What's well, Jesse this time? A professional Karen. I'll take that risk. A programmer. <clears throat> and where are they at? Oh, I need to stop writing A. That's, uh... this professional Karen computer programmer all right and where are they at Jesse and oops, Karen, Jesse and Alex met while getting their COVID vaccines. Here they are frolicking. You're cute and everything, but if you leave me naked in your ex's house again, there will be trouble. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, asterisk. Sorry, asterisk. <laughs> it's okay. Help me find my clothes. Sorry, asterisk. Notices Alex's map. What kind of weird game have you been playing? Sorry, asterisk. Years go is... by. <laughs> In 1995, something called the internet became available. I can't see the sun for all of these swirlies. Sorry, asterisk. Alex, it's broken. So what are you doing? I'm generating a location database. Can't you go play the video game from 1995? Sorry, asterisk. So what exactly is this database going to be used for? You've been working on it so long. Alex determines that Jessie's 21, as this is her last night of childhood. <laughs> Finally, a guy who likes me for my mind. Sorry, asterisk. War games. Do you like moldy bread? Sorry, asterisk. M. I love old bread. <laughs> Sorry, asterisk. Ew. Look at the new microscope page. Sorry, asterisk. Alex proposes. What do you like to do for fun? I used to like soap operas and crossword puzzles, but now I prefer web pages. I need to write a filter to prevent someone some, from saying the same thing twice. I can't do that right now, but I'll figure that out. Something called the internet. Oops. Alrighty, Jesse. I wonder if it understood what professional Karen was. Uh, let's do Jesse. 
taxidermist. Perfect. Thank you, Montoyland. Alex? <clears throat> A vampire. That'd be a good team, like a vampire and taxidermist working together. I guess if they're raised from that. Alright. And where are they hanging out? Alex goes to get his pet bat stopped. <clears throat> Alex shows Jesse a dead bat he found in his town using an eerie, infrared mini camcorder then asks her to quickly stuff it. Ashes to ashes. Alex has a grudge against a mannequin resembling Vladimir Putin, which he expresses through verbal taunting and pixelated pummeling with his fists. The stuffing is less forgiving than the plucking. Alex and Jesse discuss the current taxidermic status on stuff exotic pets. Reprovings advise Alex on how to fluff stuffing. <laughs> Alex is given an ultimatum to choose between blood sucking and taxidermy. His favorite threat is, I don't think so, when refusing a service Jesse offers or supplies he does not want to watch upside down. Alex buys another taxidermy kit to make boots, a purse, and a locket out of existing leather pieces. Jesse is urged to detoxify from Alex's foul sense of humor. Alex is preoccupied with conspiracy theories to the point of obsession. Alex's job, blood sucking, distracts him from achieving his true, passionate ambition. A world record for stuffing mad people and animals into a tiny town over the course of some years or decades is part of an eccentric, obsessive project, creating art. Wow. Alex plans to fill up the town saloon with taxidermy wallets of someone yelling or making other random, <gasps> abrupt sounds whilst looking bewildered and holding a beverage in each hand like the Count Arco. <gasps> Trapper Insects Alex proposes an idea for a large-scale taxidermy project using parts of sculptures, furniture and other notable utilitarian literary and artistic works. The centerpiece. A silk plush raving scientist made up mostly of words strung together into one confused coagulation. Necklace. Taxidermy necklace in the shape of furrows, with wings growing out of flower seeds from its head. Alex plans to fill the rest of town with teddy bears slapped by stuffed animals adorned by obnoxious sayings. Alex stays up all night preparing the roller skate from Art Project. Jesse warns that Alex treats taxidermy like a self-help tool. Interjection number two. Tutorial on how to stuff animals. A team of shadowy men conduct unorthodox tests on Alex's stuffed cricket bat. One man, who wraps his face in bandages like a mummy, bribes the experimenter to place shards of glass inside Jessie's face pours and into her eyes for a walk-on part as an extra robot friend at some point further along in TBS 3. Jessie has an outburst over the phone to a friend who critiques her fashion sense but she is sensitive about taxidermy as art. Interjection number 3. Lecture on grammar. One of the shadowed scientists displays a white glittery flannel beard made by Alex in dreams, also attended by the other shadowy scientist over Skype, which becomes the original model for Glitterbeard, invented as a prototype named Dr. Beardface Skirkenstein. Jesse claims to have been born clairvoyant and says the reason vampires wear hats all the time is because they want to hide things. Jesse catches the Barilla Dwarf, creepy, too convincing miniature person on a factory tour, off guard and stuffs him without being seen by his shifty looking companions or lurking looking security officers. Alex steals the only sample of mad people's voices from an experimenter along with tissue samples he smuggled out from a previous vile experimentation at TBS1 concerning semi-household insects involvement in language arts and homeschooling projects hidden inside butterflies. The madmen of Abshir have to be filled with jello before preparation. Extravagant Taxidermy Festival, Zombie Attack on Steampunk Day, Alex takes credit for organizing the event, showcasing his various taxidermied boot necklaces. The lack of negative space on Jesse's face, 
largely due to the size of her plastic nose ring and clear Stella Natura tats erases much expression and makes her goofy grin last too long. Alex accuses Jesse of pocketing the muslin cloth covered in cat DNA so that he can use it for enlargement. Alex insists on getting his own sci-fi series and starring in a dramedy where he deprives vacationers of memories with the help of his taxidermist friend. The scientists try to recreate Bernard Swain's art project, a 20 feet high Marilyn Monroe made of large marbles cemented together standing on end depicting scenes from classical literature using discarded computer monitors. Interruption. One of the crooked, egg-headed mutants accosts Jesse for wearing a fur coat during the summer and orders her to replace it with some sort of kryptonically sourced wool blend polyester, wool blend vest or be banned forever from Jesh. The rats are taught to say ding and shown taxidermied foreign exchange students. Alex denies that the one-legged RO borrows examples from prepared notes when speaking on the subject of Egyptology. Scientists continue inserting cat DNA into different centaur and RO body parts, partaking in some of the results with a group they call their inner circle. Alex threatens a cauterized bear with genital mutilation and faces the vest turkey head on. Jesse wants to know what for, he says the fur under her eyes is crunched up. She thinks he is being rude and insists that it's fogging up from crying last night because Alex forgets his anniversary date again every year or two. If Bat was mad, then why not also Lamb? Who would want to see someone in gladiator sandals champion the rights of already excessively venerated? Alex asks Jesse if something could have came out of him or was born in a safe environment then describe all the zoological exotic animals who were victims of his own taxidermy kits, in terms associated with sexual assault. Alex tortures a stuffed cat by throwing it in the microwave, this job fails because he uses human hair dye to color the guts. Jesse shows Alex another one of his threats hidden taxidermy shaped locket. Jessie feels regret as she takes responsibility for the strange, almost inhuman-looking problems directed her way by anarchists, socialists and other Halloween masks adorning their faces with synthetic whiskers when expressing discontent in public forums. <laughs> I'm gonna need a second. <laughs> what did we just listen to? <laughs> No model for glitter beard. <laughs> Treats taxidermy like a self help tool. Okay. Whew. That was incredible. Uh, whew. Let's uh, keep it rolling. I don't think we'll top that one. Anyone else enjoy that one? I couldn't breathe there for a bit. That was that was too much for me. Uh Yeah, let's see. Let me check and make sure the transcripts are being There it is. Okay. Yeah, I'm automatically um, building the transcripts as it's... It queries each line so that I can make sure that they're saying... They're not saying things too inappropriate, and it's something I'll keep on working on. Um, yeah, let me just uh, create a gist of this right now. Let's post in the chat. Um. 
sorry for the lack of white space or anything, but there you go. I should uh, reenact that one somehow. <clears throat> Alex tortures a stuffed cat by throwing it in the microwave. Alrighty. Um, I need to keep an eye on... Um, so the... Each one costs about... It's looking like a dollar. So, uh, I'm curious if I could run this 24 seven. Real actors act out the transcript. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be amazing. Um, I'd love to build this into something like with multiple characters and more voices and, um, something that could prompt subscribers and they could enter in, uh, the prompts and stuff. Let's see, it's been running about, I think a dollar per. I spent $30 today on just testing this thing out. So, I'd have to beg for subscriptions if, uh, if it comes to that. Interesting. I wonder if there's a way to optimize some of the requests. Yeah, I mean, I could, I'm not one to make a, a YouTube video of these scripts, but if anyone else wants to, that's fine by me. <clears throat> I bet I could have the AI generate professions. Like, just start with a script that generates the professions and scenes, and then drop that into the conversational script I wrote. All right, uh, anyone got a, a Jesse character for me? All right. Works in quality assurance for a mothball company. I think I need to, let's see. The prompt goes, Jesse is a, so I need to format it in a way that Jesse is a, um, quality assurance officer. Uh, is that right? A quality assurance employee, um, for a mothball company. All right. I, I do think like the more descriptive you get uh, the characters in the scene, the more it has to go on. Like there was definitely a bunch of taxidermy stuff in the last one and vampire stuff. Anybody for an Alex? Um, this is fencing, so a fencing sales person. People concerned 
about the zombie apocalypse. All right, let's hear their scene. We'll probably make this in the last one of the day. Alex and Jesse meet poolside on a Caribbean cruise. Let's go. Alex and Jesse sign up for a salsa class after their cruise. I am very impressed you found time in your busy schedule for this. There are a few times in life when one can be said to live for the moment. If you had a time machine, what would you do? <laughs> Hmm, I'm not sure. I would love to see Roman take on Jimmy D in a foil team match when they were both younger and even more competitive. <laughs> to see the dinosaurs. I already own a Velociraptor <laughs> tooth collection. I'm on Reddit and Facebook. I also have a blog with an out-of-date backlog. The blog I write for has two contributors. One is an Austin Powers superfan, and the other enjoys tea time. Alex and Jesse react to an apartment earthquake. You still have your eyes open. You really are a prince, aren't you? I think if the situation became dire enough, a little distillation could produce some magical effects. I was a mess. As friends would, I provided some moral support while cleaning up the emotional rubble. <laughs> Much better, but you're missing a layer of logic to truly make it a formidable defense. I'm not a fan of fabrics. Wait a second. What were you saying about me being assertive? Alex is abducted by aliens. <laughs> Listen, tell them that you're an ambassador from this planet and you come in peace. I want to think that the aliens in this movie were benevolent, but how can I be sure? <laughs> The entire American citizenry worships the authority of law enforcement personnel. Is it just me or did this conversation get very personal? I believe the gentleman is being chauvinistic. A princess, a common criminal. I stand corrected. When things fell apart, I had to fall back in my training in providing emotional support. He's proud to have you as a friend. Alex and Jesse agree to watch a movie together on their first date. I guess he's back from the aliens. Which just made the whole thing worse. If I didn't know you better, I would think that you were insulting my appearance. Alright. I really enjoyed the, uh... Romand take on Jimmy D in a foil team match. I'm assuming those are fencers. Roman. Maybe not. Um, it's it's great that you said a fencing, and it took that as a fencer. good stuff all right i'm going to work on this a bit more and uh i'll be back on tomorrow with some more madness probably probably around the same time and uh yeah come come hang out again and come with some character ideas i think this whole thing is recorded so you can Thanks for hanging out. That was fun. I haven't laughed that hard in a long time. See y'all later. Be excellent to each other.